me and uh, welcome back if you've uh, been watching our channel for a little while. Uh, today we're going to be starting a new project. Uh, today we will be adding a grapple to this existing loader bucket uh, that should make life a little bit easier for us when it comes to picking up uh, you know, piles of brush, piles of old fencing, and uh, it'll also utilize the hydraulics that we added during the post puller build. If you haven't checked out the post puller, puller video, uh, please do. Um, that's the plan today. I tuck away from spot. So step one of this grapple build is going to be getting something put together uh, design-wise that, you know, looks and functions the way uh, I'd like it to. Uh, like most projects, I, I went to the internet for some inspiration and I found a, a very similar bucket built by one of the larger skid steer manufacturers and kind of used that as the inspiration for this. Um, although it's not identical, we didn't get any measurements off of another bucket. We just kind of looked at it and said, yeah, that's about, it looks about right. Let's give that a go. So I'm going to walk through just the, the highlights of how you could go about constructing something like this or something similar to it. Um, and then also give at least one good option um, when it comes to doing it this yourself, if you're not not a person that has either access to CAD yourself or the know-how, or you know, in a lot of cases, you might be able to find somebody to do CAD work for you. Um, so, anyways, let's let's talk through kind of the highlights here. So, uh, the first thing you want to do is, you know, obviously this is what my bucket looks like, but it's probably not what um what your bucket looks like so to to get a design going you want to take your existing bucket and get that or into cad and so uh, this entire project can almost be 2d obviously there's depth to it so you got to get your lengths right but the really the critical steps on these are all you can almost think about the whole thing as a 2d 2d project and i think that works really well so here's the here's the bucket without any any assembly at all and if we add you know the the grapple to that you've really only got four main components that need to be laser cut so that's this top uh grapple segment with the with the teeth on it the grapple segment that has um, you know, connects from the pivot pin to the cross member to this segment with the teeth. And then you've got, you know, a, a main locator for your pin, for your main pivot pin, and then a, and then a support for the rear um, of the, of the hydraulic uh, cylinder here. So here's the same model, but with the grapple in the closed position. Um, I think to do this again, you really want to consider where you want your, what you want your grapple segment to look like when it's closed. This pin location, this main pivot pin location, that can really be anywhere in here, depending on how you put your cross member in. So if you rotate your cross member that this is mounting to, you know, five degrees forward or five degrees aft that's going to change your pivot location and it's going to change where your your claw is in the closed position so so one thing having a model will also do for you is it'll give you the ability to determine how much stroke you want on your hydraulic cylinder so i actually uh when we drew this up originally i was thinking yeah i need a i need an eight inch stroke here just kind of had that in mind for the the length of uh, amount of opening I, I needed but really having that this there's a relatively short throw between this pivot and the the closed position pin location and the fully open you know pin position if we go back to that um, a, a six inch cylinder was actually more than enough to... so one last option I want to talk through if you're if you're doing this yourself is you can do this whole thing with cardboard. 
Uh, you don't have to have CAD. So the metal fabrication shop that I worked with, um, they've told me in the past, hey, if you need something cut out and you don't want to go through the process of getting that into, into CAD and creating files for it, just, just bring in cardboard templates. We'll measure it uh, and we'll, we'll get it into, we'll, we'll basically draw it up in our, in our system now. You know, you're kind of trading your time for their time. Um, but I think, you know, if you've got a cardboard template, it's not that it, it's actually a pretty quick to still draw up um, in their in their software. And so I think in this case, you could also do that as part of your design work. So if you had if you could put all this on the like on a flat surface and maybe maybe even change the scale a little bit, you wouldn't want to do that for what you hand off your uh, metal fabrication shop, but just for the sake of trying to make sense of this on a, you know, on your table, um, you could cut these shapes, you know, out of cardboard or, or what have you, even scale them down if you want to. And then, you know, just try different iterations out of paper, whether that's cardboard or even just, you know, like printer paper and, and try to give yourself a feel for what you like and what you don't like and then so certainly i could keep going into depth on the design work that happened for this but i feel i'm gonna bore probably too many of you with that so i'll just give this one last spin around so if you know this is something you're trying to replicate you can get a good look at it um, if you still have questions uh, when we get to the end of this on whether it's process or um, whether it's any, anything about anything about how we put this together, um, just shoot me a comment in the, in the, on the video. And, uh, I read all those, uh, <laughs> it's not, there's a lot of them, uh, and, um, and I'm happy to respond, uh, to you and try to try to help you out any way I can, um, try to, you know, if I'm, if I'm paving new ground here, I'm happy to share. Uh, what my experiences have been uh, with you. So anyways, I think that'll be it for, for taking a look at the model. Uh, let's get to work. So the first step of assembly is going to be taking the seven claw segments with the teeth on them and attaching them to both the round tube horizontal cross member as well as, as, well as the square tube horizontal cross member. And So the next thing we're doing is taking off the top rail of the existing uh, bucket. That rail has a significant bend to it, most likely because of the chain hook that's placed in the center at some point, whether it was me or the previous owner, you know, probably lifted something that was, was too heavy. Uh, I did take a look at the wall thickness on that tube after we got it off, and it's about uh, a 120 wall. It may not even be quite that. So I think going with this two inch square tube that's quarter wall uh, will both make it a little bit stronger. Obviously it'll also be straight, but then in addition to that, uh, you know, having a square surface to locate off of, I think is gonna make uh, a lot of this um, process easier. And it is something that we considered from the start of the design product process, uh, you know, removing that, that tube and, and, and replacing it with something square just to make, uh, design design a little bit easier. Just a quick shot of us drilling all of the bushings out. So there's a quarter inch hole that goes through the bushing and through the pin that is matched with that bushing. And the reason for that is simple. It's just so that the pin doesn't walk out of the holes over time. And then also keeps the pin from rotating relative to the bushing that is intended to have the rotation. So the bushings that are intended to have rotation will have a grease circ on them and the pins are intended to be stationary. So this, this hole that'll get filled with the bolt uh, down, you know, after assembly uh, is for that purpose. All right, so we're finally uh, getting somewhere on this project. Uh, I just laid this out to try to give a better idea of what the heck I'm doing. So 
I've built, I haven't welded much. Most of this is either just prep fit or tacked together. But I went ahead and built the main claw assembly and I'm working on the arms that attach this to the bucket as well as, uh, you know, have the pivot function within them and then also have a place for the uh, hydraulic rams to mount. So uh, you'll see that this arm, it's actually on the wrong side. It actually goes over there, but uh, there'll be another one. So I've got plates here um, to put those on. Uh, I guess a couple things that I think are worth touching on, uh, some mistakes I've made, some things I've run into while getting this all pulled together. So the biggest hang up I've had is just simple stack up uh, issues. Uh, call them issues, they're, they're more just oversights, things that I kind of rush through in the design process and now I'm having to take material off because things are tighter than they need to be. So I'd say the number one thing that if you're gonna do this at home and you don't have your own plasma table, like me, I, I don't have a plasma table to build this. So the way I did this is, you know, obviously you'll have already seen uh, the CAD spin around, but we created, you know, files for the four main pieces that make up this assembly. And a lot of those have holes in them that, you know, this is a one and a quarter inch bushing quarter wall that is going to be used for, uh, you know, basically to go on here, but it needs to fit into this three eighths plate hole. And so, you know, I just made this, the hole that this is supposed to go into the same dimension as this bushing. So this is a one and a quarter inch bushing made the hole, uh, you know, an inch and a quarter. Well, I should have talked with the guy that I, I had cut these out on this plasma table and said, how much wiggle room do I need to add to these drawings so that I'm not, you know, hitting these with a die grinder for a while to, to make those holes fit my stuff. And, he's, and I actually asked him after the fact, said, oh yeah, you probably wanted to, should have added about 20, maybe even 30 thousandths to that. Well, now I know, mistake made, I guess, uh, Good, good learning moment for me. So, so a lot of these bushings, the, uh, these bushings are all made out of uh, quarter wall DOM, which is actually a great thing to make a bushing out of. The thing I ran into is the shafts that I got, uh, you know, were pretty close, but they had some scale on them. So I had to polish up a lot of these, uh, you know, shafts to get them to fit in my bush into my. Uh, into my DOM. DOM actually the inside diameter. So like this is one inch inside diameter, inch and a half outside diameter. You know, the inside of this bushing is anywhere from one to five thousandths less than one inch. So when you have a one inch shaft and something that could be five thousandths less than one inch, obviously that's not going to go together. So um, uh, in the case of the one inch, I took the shafts down uh, you know, about 10 thousandths. In the case of the three quarter inch shafts, I took the bushings down and they're still probably a bit too tight. I think I'm gonna take these, uh, a lot of these three quarter inch shafts and put them on the lathe. Uh, not that I have one, but a, a buddy of mine uh, has a lathe that I can borrow. So um, we'll put those three quarter inch shafts on and, and really just polish them up and take the scale off and they'll probably fit through uh, just fine. Here's actually one that I did. Uh, you know, I was able to take the, take the scale off and that fits on this bushing quite tight. So all of the plate steel is all three inch thick. Um, all the bushings are quarter wall. Uh, the, both the bar that's going to go on the top of the bucket to mount this to is two inch quarter wall. And then this called a cross member, whatever you want to call it. This is also two inch square tube uh, quarter wall. The only thing that I went kind of thin on, and it was really just because I didn't want to buy a piece of DOM that was super long, because uh, that would have been, you know, the DOM tubing is, is, is quite expensive. Uh, this is HREW, so hot rolled electric welded uh, tubing, and this is 120 wall. 
but you know it's really just here to keep spacing between these teeth uh, this shouldn't see a lot of impact um, maybe it does maybe it gets beat up but I don't know we'll see if uh, ends up being a problem you know maybe I'll come back and reinforce it all right so this is uh, I got this mocked up here this is what would be as close as I can represent to the jaws or the grapple in its full open position so this is just hanging loose on here this would be the mount so there's one on each side that's going to mount that's going to weld on to the top bar that's on the bucket so you, you saw earlier we were cutting off uh, the original round tube that made up the top of the bucket uh, the reason we did that a couple reasons one i wasn't sure how thick that bar was to be able to support the weight and the force that this grapple is going to exert on it um, and it was already bent and trying to start with something that's not even anywhere close to square would have made this a um, an extra fun challenge and uh, i wasn't wasn't looking for that this go around so we decided to go ahead and cut that off and put in a piece of two inch square uh, which square tubing in this instance i think is is kind of nice to work with as well better than uh, a round tube for what we're doing so these mounts will you know this will this square opening will weld onto our uh round uh our square sorry our square tubing that we're going to weld in onto the top of the bucket and then obviously this is a bushing that will end up going inside that hole to um kind of hold this this still and then last thing i'll show uh, we did put grease there for the hydraulic cylinders you know those come those hydraulic cylinders come with a grease circ on them here and here but then you know we went ahead and put a grease circ here on this pivot so that's a piece of uh, two and three quarters long one and a half inch od quarter wall dom that is that's the part that's actually going to rotate around this one inch shaft here Right, so these will be stationary. These bushings will be welded in. That shaft is gonna, you know, rotate the 90 degrees or so of rotation we're gonna get out of this thing. And then uh, these are the mounts that are gonna mount the hydraulic cylinder to the bucket. So when the cylinder goes to extend or contract, this will be kind of the anchor point of the back of that cylinder uh, that gives it something to either push or pull against. So you've got, you know, a little bit of a radius there to match the bucket and then some bushings uh, mo no, very little of this is welded in so far so i think that's probably going to be our our next step but things are starting to shape up i think it was worth taking a couple minutes to talk about so on to the next step uh, this is the kind of the first point in the process where getting things in as perfect of alignment as you can is really becoming critical so one thing I'll point out here. So you'll notice the main pivot bushings on either side, uh, keeping those in line with each other as close as you can is is really going to make your life easy or give you issues if you if you fail to do that. So uh, one of the things I did when I was welding the these segments on to the horizontal cross member is I ran a, a one inch rod uh, from through through the bushings and from one bushing to the next for that center pivot uh, just to just to ensure that that I kept that in alignment and uh, didn't have to fight that that down the road so my oldest son is coming to the shop to give me a hand I tell you what I I really enjoy that my kids take some interest in what I'm doing and I always try to slow down and make sure they can be involved as much as they'd like to be. Now my daughter's walked in and it's uh, time to take a dad break. Uh, she just started riding her bike without pedals a couple days ago so I'm giving her a boost get back out on the pavement uh, riding her bike around. You know, that's one thing I really enjoy about the location of my shop relative to my house. It's, you know, it's on one hand, sure, you know, it's uh, a little bit harder to escape uh, all the distractions, but at the same time, uh, I'm close enough that if, uh, you know, the kids need dad, 
uh, I'm just I'm just right here. So uh, I'm glad that they uh, you know they're able to come in and put put the brakes on my project <laughs> uh, whenever they want to. So it looks like I'm even lucky enough to have attracted the attention of the boss. Uh, hopefully she's impressed. Well, she's got her hands on her hips, so um, maybe I got some more work to do. So this is the first uh, function check of the bucket. Everything seems to rotate freely, uh, not binding, and uh, gotta say, pretty happy. One last function check with the supervision of my number one fan. So this is gonna wrap up part one of our grapple add-on to this existing loader bucket. I think overall it went together pretty well. Uh, obviously there's still a decent amount of work left to do, although most of the call it heavy lifting, but uh, on a more of a intellectual level is done. So there's all of the finished welding needs to happen. You know, it needs to get painted. It needs to have hydraulic lines routed in a way that makes sense uh, for this. But, um, you know, it, 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 the loader, the grapple does open and close freely. Um, we don't have pins that are binding. And so that's, you know, when you put something like this together, that's what you worry about the most is you get to the end and, you know, if you've got your two pivot pins aren't right in line with each other and they're either tilted in or tilted out, you know, that's not going to, that's not going to move freely. And either you're going to wear your bushings prematurely if you can get them to move at all, or you're going to be in a spot where your loader doesn't or your grapple doesn't open and close. Um, I will talk a little bit about what this cost me to do. Obviously, there's a tremendous amount of design work that goes into this as well as, you know, making sure you assemble it right. So I wouldn't say this is, if you're a novice or, yeah, well, I, I don't, uh, you know, I would probably call myself, an, you know, somewhere between an amateur and a mid-level um, fabricator. But if you're, if this is your first fabrication project, don't, don't build this. Um, it's uh there's a lot of things that can go wrong um but if you got some experience with it i think this is something that would be would be pretty pretty straightforward uh for someone to do so here's those hydraulic cylinders that reside on the back <clears throat> so the way you plumb these together is both the rod side you know on both cylinders will be tied together so like, let's say one side of the uh, grapple has got more pressure on the other, you know, both those cylinders will be transferring for force to wherever it's clamping at the tightest. And then both hydraulic or both uh, of the piston side of the hydraulic cylinder will also be tied together. And then those will feed into the, 
you know, the, the existing couplers I have that kind of operate, you know, function similar to a third function. Uh, they run off my rear remote, so they're not exactly a third function, but, um, that's how that'll get plumbed up. So that's pretty, <laughs> the hydraulics on this is by far, uh, the most straightforward and, uh, probably easy thing to figure out. We'll, we'll come up with some mounting blocks, you know, to mount those here onto the top of the bucket. So they stay out of the, you know, tucked out of the way nice and, uh, you know, don't get, don't get damaged. So the, <clears throat> the last thing I want to talk about on this is, you know, what is it, what does it cost to build one of these? Um, obviously I had a tremendous amount of design work, uh, in CAD to get these plates laser cut. Um, and then just uh, the, the time to assemble it, which is, it's not just throw it together and start tacking stuff. You need to have, you need to have thought about what needs to stay in alignment with each other when you're putting this together. And so you know, you're probably spending half your time actually welding and fitting and the other half thinking about how you're going to going to screw it up or how you are going to keep yourself from screwing it up. But, um, as far as cost goes, if you took out, you know, the labor side of it, uh, I've got $300 in steel here. So that includes the cost to have all of the, uh, three eighths plate laser cut. So some of that is material costs. Some of that is shop time. So the, the local, uh, <clears throat> steel fabrication shop that I buy all my metal metal from, uh, just probably uh, 30 minutes south of me or maybe maybe 25 they're they're a great shop they are there's a there's a uh a, a guy that works there that that helps me out uh, well he doesn't he he owns the place the guy that owns the place you know if, it's nice because if i come up with an idea yeah i can run it past him and say hey is this dumb and he'll say yeah that sounds dumb don't do it that way do it this way <laughs> and he's got years of experience so i like uh i like bouncing stuff off of him but anyways you know, so they, they did the laser cut on all of these. Uh, so I, I gave them, you know, CAD files, they cut them out. And then I ended up, you know, I spent 300 bucks all together on their shop time and then the material itself. Um, and then I've got, I think I have $120 per hydraulic cylinder. Maybe it's a touch under that. I'll, I'll put a, a breakdown of the pricing on this. I'll go back and look. I think they were $100 piece. So, you know, $300 in steel, $120 a piece. So $240 in cylinders, you know, and then I'll probably have hopefully less than a hundred dollars in hydraulic lines, maybe a hair over that. Um, you know, I think one of these, one of these days I'm just going to end up, I'm going to buy or, or find a used, uh, hydraulic hose crimping tool with as many hoses that I custom order or have to replace just makes sense to have that. I don't know what those cost, but you know, if you can get one for less than a grand, I feel like it it would pay for itself because the components to make hoses aren't too bad. But uh, the, especially the shop I've been going to recently, um, they they're real. Their their cost is real steep on getting custom hoses made, uh, which uh, a couple of years ago they weren't too bad. So uh, I don't think that's going to change. I think that's just you know the economy that we're in and the cost for labor and the the markup they need to have to be profitable. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but if I can find a way to save that cost, doing it myself and have a tool, <laughs> I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for buying my own, you know, having my own tools, especially if I uh, think I can <clears throat> end up justifying the cost in the long run. So anyways, yeah, probably around 600 bucks. I'll send done. Maybe, maybe a touch over that, but um, we'll see. I still have some, I still have the hoses to buy. Um, but when those are, after those are purchased, I'll have a exact, exact figure um, on this, on this graph. And I would say, um, with how it turned out, it may not be the best add on grapple there is on the market for, uh, for a tractor like this or a bucket like this. But, uh, I think for the cost, you know, if you're willing to do it yourself, uh, it, this is the best $600 you can, you can spend on a, on an add on grapple. And, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm excited to put it to work. I've got a ton of jobs for it. And uh, we'll do that in the next, uh, in part two. So part two will be finish weld everything, which I won't bore you with because I've got hours of welding. I haven't decided I might be taking this over to my 
got a, a neighboring farmer that's got a nice 250 amp MIG welder Miller. And uh, every once in a while, if I've got enough project to justify it, I can take just drive something over to him, uh, his shop, and and weld it up there. Um, or, you know, I'll I'll MIG weld here the stuff that isn't real critical on weld penetration and then i'll stick weld anything that is critical and that's probably the route i'll go just because you know i'm I'm slowly getting better at stick welding and that only will continue if i continue to stick weld so it seems logical to uh to do that but i don't know it, it obviously is faster a lot quicker to to mig weld it all together uh, so we got a lot of welding to do we've got paint to do which is i don't even know if i'll shoot video of that because <laughs> yeah, there's a reason they say watch and paint dry, right? And then uh, hydraulic lines, which will be real similar to the hydraulic line. I'll probably use the same clamps and couplings uh, that I used on the uh, post puller vi video. Um, you know, the, the, we'll, we'll we'll take some video on that in case there's you know, in case my explanation of how these hydraulics went, need to go together didn't make any sense. Uh, I'll I'll get a a video of that, and then we'll go move a whole bunch of stuff. So, anyways. Uh, like I said, thanks for watching this. Um, I've, you know, I'm, I'm new to YouTube. I've, I've been enjoying the projects that I'm doing. I'm enjoying learning the video aspect of this. And, uh, and I hope this is both good information, you know, for folks that are trying to do similar stuff, but then also still entertaining. Um, and so if you, if you like it, please do, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. Just takes a minute or uh, give us a thumbs up. That also really helps the channel out and uh, just takes a second to do that. And uh, if you, if you think you might have friends that would enjoy this kind of content, please, uh, please, please, please pass us around and, uh, and uh, share our channel. So anyways, thanks again and uh, have a good one.